My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, St. Paul tells us, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach crucified, Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, at this time of the coronavirus, there are people who are asking questions. The virus has played havoc in our lives. Not only has it brought sickness, it has brought isolation, it has brought economical crisis, there are migrants and so many other things that one just has to see a kind of a domino effect from one thing to another. And so people have this one question at the top of their mind. Why the suffering? What is suffering? And there are three kinds of people that we encounter. One is the atheists. The atheists have every reason to believe that there is no God. Because with the definition of God, the very fact of the word God, the definition means someone who is extremely good, extremely powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, etc. And here they'll say, if there was a God, then how can a God bring something like this and misery to life? And therefore, this whole coronavirus proves my point that there is no God. We shall remain atheist. On the other side of this spectrum, you have people who are fundamentalist. And they look at it like this is a punishment from God. Pope Francis last week said in the Urbi Orbi that it is not God's punishment. It's man's greed, envy, jealousy, etc. And the world needs healing. And the world needs some kind of break to repair itself. And that you and I need this break also. And then you have the third category of people who are neither here nor there. The pessimist, look at life badly. And just look at it as fate, F-A-T-E. My luck. It's just that I got it. There are others who didn't get it or whatever. My dear sisters and brothers, this question of suffering has gone down the ages. It's only in modern times, with modern philosophy and psychology that people have tried to address this issue. And one of the earliest pro-Christian writers was C.S. Lewis. In 1945, he wrote a book called The Problem of Pain and tried to explain it with scripture basis. Another lovely book which I read and I like it because it's a rabbi. And Rabbi Harold Kushner lost his son, a grown-up son. And dwelling through the scriptures and trying to find out, he wrote this famous book that many of you have heard, at least the title, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? And thirdly, least recently, another Jewish man called Yancy has written, Where is God when it hurts? Taking questions from people to uh, try and find out why God, why is there suffering? For us, my dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, today, Good Friday, is the day when we look at the suffering of Jesus. But prior to that, we need to go back to Scripture, to Adam and Eve, as I said in the beginning. It was their brokenness, their ego, their false idea of whom they were, and broke away from God himself. And then leads to Cain and Abel, and Cain's killing or murdering Abel, and so on. And then you go on to find that the suffering all in the Old Testament, right from Cain and Abel, right down to Noah. And then God says, okay, let's start again. And then we have Noah. But then also you have the famous book on suffering, Job. And Job is a simple man. He wants a simple answer from God. He doesn't want a theological answer. He wants to know what wrong did I do to get punishment like this? Because when we look at Judea, Judea, Greek philosophy, there has to be a cause and an effect. And so if I am suffering, all his friends ask him to ask God, ask God why you're suffering. What wrong did you do? And Job says, I'm not going to ask him. 
my dear sisters and brothers but job has one thing in mind that he will wait in the japanese zen there's a, uh, a phrase a uh, koan and it says when the pupil is ready the teacher will appear and that is exactly what jesus when job wants to know questions G god sorry not jesus god comes and says in job 38 where were you where were you when i made the universe where were you when i put the stars in place where were you when the planets were arranged so they don't clash where were you when i limited the waters onto the land and created waters and lands did i ask you all this do you know the bigger picture of it all and noah job is in total surrender in fact he apologizes i don't understand the bigger picture you know my dear sisters and brothers in jesus christ i'd like to use an analogy imagine a flying saucer lands on one of these top hospitals like lilavati top big hospital and there this man from mars this martian he comes down and when he comes down he sees a lot of people and then he sees this men taking a person to the surgery and he hides and he watches in the surgery in the theater what's happening and then out of fright he runs up to the terrace gets into his flying saucer and takes off and when he reaches mars people ask him what did you see he said you know these earth beings they are cruel four of them come with green all covered their faces covered so you can't find out their identity they are criminals they come they take this guy and they wheel him into a room which is so bright that you and i would go blind another way of hiding evidence and then they take this man and before he can say anything someone takes an empty bowl kind of thing and puts it on his face and that man is out for the count and then four other men come with gloves they don't want their fingerprints to be around the place and they go straight to this man they cut him open they take out something and the moment they take out something everybody's so excited ah oh, they make kind of a thing i'm sure it is some kind of charger or generator that they want for their own lives they take it out they stitch him up and they just push him out into another room which is quiet i noticed that room had i see you i wanted to tell them i can see you and i was so frightened that i ran up to my spaceship and took off this is what the human beings do my dear sister and brother i can see way back in your bedroom in your hall you're smiling because that's how we see suffering we see suffering like the man from mars we don't know the realities we don't know that there was a surgery and that there were surgeons and that the ic room is there for him to be better my dear sisters and brothers in jesus christ this is where we need to trust in god we sing so often in his time he'll make all things new and we sing it with faith today we begin the novena of divine mercy and below the picture is i trust in you do you really trust in god that he has everything in control my dear sisters and brothers in jesus christ many years ago way back there was an assassination and when the mother heard of this assassination of her son she knelt down and prayed and said i am so glad that god has taken bobby away if bobby lived perhaps he would do something wrong and that mother was john kennedy's mother with great faith i trust in god we looked this afternoon and this morning at the garden of gethsemane last night and what did jesus say father it's not my will but your will be done if this cup has to go through let it go through but your will be done and that my dear sisters and brothers is what we require to do you know my dear sisters and brothers many of the ancient philosophers especially the japanese chinese sufism they have this yin and yang the good and the bad the black and the white the dark and the light and so on and one of the sufi 
men said, if you can accept the dark and the light, then what's wrong with you not accepting life as it is? My dear sisters and brothers, in the book of Ecclesiasticus you have, there is a time and a purpose for everything under heaven. A time to cry and a time to sing, a time to break down and a time to build up. And God is telling us, look, there is a time for everything. And I know exactly what and who you are. Psalm 139. I know you. I know how you're formed. I know your first word. My dear sisters and brothers, knowing all this, we need to have what is known as a previous mindset. In all the good times, you remember, in the moments of difficulties, remember those good times, a previous mindset. That's why St. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, Rejoice at all times. Be glad that at all circumstances. Because those are the strong moments that you will require at this time. There are so many messages going on WhatsApp. How beautiful this coronavirus has made part of our lives. It's given us silence. It's given us time to pray. It has given us to come closer to our families. And it's regenerating the earth. And there are so many nice things. This is what is known as positive imaging. You don't grumble at things. There is a time and a purpose for everything. My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, suffering teaches us many things. I remember meeting a doctor in Alampundi where I worked for three months with the lepers. And I used to feel sorry for these people with their hands slightly bleeding and so on. And this doctor told me, thank God always for pain. These people can't feel pain and that is why their hand drops off. That is why they have an infection even without knowing it. But you and I, we know when we have pain, there is something happening. There's something wrong with me. When I have a headache, it could be a tumor, it could be tension, it could be trying to please people, whatever. But it is a sign. And that is what we got to remember in times of suffering. Suffering, my dear sisters and brothers, also motivates us to love. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. There are many psychologists who have written, beginning with Freud, right down to Rollo May, who says, most of our problems is when we fail to love. Most of our pain is when we fail to love. Is that new? No. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. But when we don't love ourselves, my dear sisters and brothers, we fall into what is known as the Messiah complex. Nothing can be done without me. If people don't appreciate me, something is wrong. And you get into this complex because you don't love yourself. You get into this complex with so much of pain because you don't appreciate what God has done for you. You have not seen the plus points in your life and the blessings God has made. You know, one of the things that I do every night is from St. Pope John, yeah, St. John the 23rd. When St. John the 23rd was made the Pope, he never wanted to be the Pope. But as things began to build up, Every night, Pope John the 23rd, nice roly-poly kind of guy, would fall on his knees at the bed and he would look up to God and say, Listen, Jesus, I have looked after your church today. Now I'm going to sleep. You look after it in the night. And I felt that was the most beautiful, sincere prayer of surrender. You never saw John the 23rd upset. You never see Pope Francis getting so upset because they know that there's a time and a purpose for everything. Finally, my dear sisters and brothers, St. Paul says, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be ours in Jesus in heaven.